G'day folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and this is the brand new SRAM XX T-Type drivetrain. Now this is one of three new drivetrains that SRAM has just launched. There's XO, XX and XXSL. Now we'll point out here that SRAM is no longer referring to these as drivetrains. Instead, they're now known as transmissions. Now that's fair enough because these do represent a massive change over the previous Axis drivetrains. There are still 12 speeds and you'll still find a 10 to 52 tooth cassette, but almost everything else has changed, not least of which is this new direct mount derailleur, which no longer uses a traditional hanger. Why get rid of the derailleur hanger and how does this new transmission perform on the trail? We've been testing two XX transmissions over the past six months, and here we'll be diving into our long-term experience while breaking down the nine key reasons why we think this is such a big deal. Alright, so number one, there is no more derailleur hanger. That's right folks, you can get rid of your fancy hanger alignment tool and you can also forget about fiddly adjustment screws. And that's because there are no limit screws or B-gap adjustments on the new derailleur. Instead of requiring a hanger, the new derailleur mounts directly to the frame using the rear wheel's through axle as the structural anchor point. It's designed specifically for frames that utilize a UDH dropout, and that means that SRAM has complete control over the dimensions between the derailleur, the dropout, and the cassette. Because all of these variables are now standardized, the derailleur doesn't need to be limited in its movement. It knows exactly where the 10 tooth sprocket starts and where the 52 tooth sprocket finishes, and it only needs to perform each shift in between. No more, no less. And since there's no hanger to align, limit screws to adjust, or B-gap to measure, set up with the new transmission is the fastest and simplest we've ever experienced. Number two, well on the trail, the first aspect that we noticed, or more accurately didn't notice, is just how quiet it is. SRAM has fully optimized the new transmission around a 55 millimeter chain line, which we'll discuss in more detail in a bit. And that, combined with the new T-type tooth profile, the flat top chain, and the bigger jockey wheels, has resulted in a much smoother interface between all the mesh and gear surfaces. SRAM has also increased the cage's clutch force, which increases tension on the chain. Combined with the fact that the derailleur doesn't have a B-gap screw to pivot against, there's less bouncing around and therefore less noise over rough terrain. The shift performance is similarly quiet and satisfyingly accurate. There's still a small whir from the motor, which is followed by a crisp snap as the chain settles into place. A big part of this is the chunky direct mount derailleur, which produces a much stiffer interface. As a result, shifts are sharper and more direct. The jumps between each gear at the low end of the cassette have also been tightened. This reduces the mechanical gymnastics that the chain has to perform when going up to the larger sprocket, and it also results in less disturbance to your cadence. You might also notice that with the exception of the setup cog, all of the sprockets now use the narrow wide X-Sync profile. This improves retention and accuracy by providing a very specific shift gate for the chain to transition through as it moves between each cog. Additionally, if you try and shift three or four gears in one go, the derailleur won't attempt to do all of that in one hit. Instead, it hesitates slightly, which gives the chain a chance to hit one of those shift gates before changing gear. This means that in the work stand, the shifting appears to be kind of slow, but out on the trail, it becomes apparent that the system does this deliberately in order to shift with better accuracy and reliability under load. Number three is that it works even better on an e-mountain bike. In addition to testing the SRAM XX transmission on this Yeti, Mick also received a separate group set to install on his Levo. Now it's worth noting here that SRAM isn't producing any e-mountain bike specific components for its new transmission. Instead, all of these parts are designed to be used on any mountain bike, whether it has a motor or not. Within the first ride on the Levo, it was obvious that this new transmission is even better on an e-mountain bike. And that's because it's optimized to shift under load. And indeed, the harder you push, the sharper the shift. Even while out of the saddle, in full turbo mode, and with the rear brake on, the rear derailleur was able to perform each shift with zero complaints. 
And because the derailleur pauses between those multi-shifts, you never have to worry about the motor delivering power to the chain when it's not properly engaged. As a result, it's virtually impossible to misshift with this new transmission. All right, number four, you can literally stand on the derailleur. Of course, the biggest concern that everyone's expressed to us while we've been testing these new transmissions is the lack of a derailleur hanger. And since the dawn of time, the derailleur hanger has been made out to be the sacrificial lamb that's designed to bend or break before causing damage to the frame or the derailleur. So without a hanger, surely you're risking catastrophic damage if the derailleur cops an impact. To address this, SRAM already had part of the solution with its previous axis derailleurs and the overload clutch. Give the derailleur a kick from the side and the overload clutch engages in order to protect the tiny motor and gearbox inside the derailleur. After absorbing the impact, the derailleur then shifts back into its previous position. Secondly, the UDH dropout allows the derailleur to rotate backwards in the event of a frontal impact. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the derailleur's direct mount design means that lateral forces are directed into the axle rather than the frame. After hearing from SRAM about how strong the new derailleur design is, we decided to put those claims to the test by laying the bike on the ground and literally standing on top of the derailleur. Aside from the sickening sound of the overload clutch giving way, the derailleur actually feels uncannily solid underfoot. This does make sense given it's more of a structural member rather than a delicate mechanism hanging from a small piece of alloy. And having repeated this torturous show to many riders over the past six months, we're still yet to inflict any damage to either the frame or the derailleur. Number five, long-term durability is really impressive. Shift performance is exactly the same as the day we received it, and aside from regular washing and lubing, we haven't had to touch any of the components. Battery charging is much the same as before in that you'll still need to remember to charge that little access battery on a regular basis. It's worth noting that the new derailleur does run the battery down a little bit quicker due to the increased clutch tension, which requires more energy when the derailleur is shifting up the cassette. As you'll no doubt be able to see from all the scuffs and scars, the derailleur has copped an absolute hiding over the past six months. More recently, Mick spent a good portion of a photo shoot deliberately smacking the derailleur on a rock on the inside of a tight right hand corner. The derailleur's overload clutch would absorb the impact every single time before promptly returning to its default position as if nothing had ever happened. When the impact was particularly hard, the derailleur would also rotate backwards thanks to the UDH dropout. A quick push of the derailleur back down into position was all that was required in order to keep riding. It's pretty unreal looking back on that video footage now, given that these would have been expensive ride-ending events in the past. Now it is worth noting here that the new derailleur does have a narrower stance compared to the old Axis derailleurs, which means it's less likely to make contact with rocks and trees to begin with. There's also been a lot of attention paid to the lower cage, which features heavily chamfered edges in order to avoid catching sticks and debris on the trail. If a stick does get lodged in the lower jockey wheel, the outer teeth are able to spin independently from the central carrier in order to avoid jamming up. SRAM calls this brilliant design the magic wheel, and you'll find it on both the XX and XXSL derailleurs. While we are yet to destroy a derailleur, SRAM has designed them to be fully rebuildable with four main components that you can purchase separately. Furthermore, these bolt-on scuff guards can also be replaced. Number six, well, a big part of our positive experience with the SRAM XX transmissions boils down to the simplicity of installation and adjustability. SRAM claims that the majority of failures it identified with previous drivetrains came down to improper setup. Either the hanger wasn't aligned to begin with, or the chain wasn't the right length, or the limit screws and B-gap tension weren't adjusted properly. Now that might be less of an issue with older nine-speed components, but a modern 12-speed drivetrain is far less forgiving of poor tolerances. And while you might know how to adjust your derailleur perfectly, there are a lot of people out there who don't. By removing those variables from the equation and building a stronger anchor point for the derailleur, SRAM has radically reduced the potential points of failure and we reckon that's a very good thing. Number seven, well the new pod controllers are a big improvement. Each pod features two buttons that offers a significantly more positive and tactile feel compared to the old axis controllers. The rubber pads are available in both flat and concave profiles, so you can mix and match depending on your preference. 
In addition to the lateral and angular adjustment at the mount, each pod can be rotated so you can tweak the approach angle for your thumbs. This delivers way more adjustment compared to the old Axis controllers, and we've had no issues with grip interference either. While we love the improved adjustability and tactility, the new buttons aren't quite as effortless to use as the old Axis controllers. We'd also prefer if there was just a single button on the left-hand side to activate the dropper post. The good news is that thanks to the standardized wireless protocol, you could pair the old Axis controllers with the new transmission if you preferred. Number eight, well this is the first group set to be purpose-built around the 55 millimeter chain line. This sees the chain ring pushed three millimeters outboard compared to a standard boost drivetrain. It doesn't sound like much, but the extra room allows frame designers to build in more tire clearance and potentially thicker and stronger chain stays. Now over the past couple of years, both Shimano and SRAM have introduced specific crank sets with a 55 millimeter chain line. The problem that we've encountered is that because the cassette isn't spaced out any wider, the chain ends up on a pretty severe angle when you're in the larger sprockets. This leads to more friction and noise and a greater chance of chain derailment when backpedaling. With the new XX transmission, however, the cassette has been spaced out wider. According to SRAM, the cassette sits 1.8 millimeters further outboard, and this improves the chain line while still being able to use a conventional Boost 148 rear hub. Furthermore, if you look at the derailleur from behind, you'll notice that the cage appears to be bent. Now, this is actually a specific profile that allows it to articulate throughout the gear range so that the lower jockey wheel is always pointing to the chain ring. This results in a straighter and smoother path for the chain again resulting in less friction and noise. Our ninth and final point is weight. Now while we're looking at the XX group set, the cranks, chain and cassette are pretty much the same weight as the previous version. The shifter pods have gotten a little bit lighter compared to the old Axis controllers. The new XX derailleur is heavier though, coming in at 466 grams. Compare that to the 400 gram combined weight of the old XX1 Axis derailleur and a UDH hanger. Now that isn't a big increase in weight, but it's still an important one to point out. And that's because over the past couple of decades, we've become accustomed to new bikes and components always being lighter than the old models. The thing is, some extra weight can actually be a good thing. And that's why we've seen the advent of tubeless inserts, thicker tire casings, big forks and even heavy duty brake rotors. It's a similar story with the new XX derailleur. Yes, it's heavier, but the grams have been well spent because this is way tougher than anything else before it. Now, if you're curious to know more about our experience of testing the SRAM XX transmission, including some of the other downsides, we've delved a lot deeper in the full review, which is now live over at flowmountainbike.com. There you'll find more information on pricing, along with a detailed look at both the XO and XXSL group sets. We also discuss our thoughts on a SRAM GX axis transmission, whether we'll see this technology carry over into SRAM's road and gravel group sets, and how we think Shimano is going to respond. Now, if you fancy checking it out, hit the link in the video description below. But to sum up our thoughts after six months of testing, well, it's clear that the new SRAM XX transmission presents a truly evolutionary leap for the modern mountain bike drivetrain. Shifting is faster, crisper, and more dependable than ever before. It's ridiculously easy to set up, and there are fewer adjustments to get wrong. Indeed, it's the overall reliability and strength that represents the biggest improvement over previous drivetrains. Despite all the intended and unintended abuse, we're still yet to experience a single misshift or drop chain. Yes, the derailleurs have suffered countless scars, but no ride has been ruined, and that really does say a lot. All that innovation certainly doesn't come cheap, and the eye-watering pricing behind the new derailleurs, cassettes, and chains will certainly raise a few eyebrows. We can't argue with the performance and durability, though, and we love that the derailleur is fully rebuildable. We also owe SRAM props for developing the first group set that's properly optimized around the 55 millimeter chain line. It works exceptionally well, and it may very well spell the beginning of the end for the Super Boost standard. We are eager to see SRAM trickle down the T-type transmission technology to a more budget-friendly GX level and perhaps even further. But in the meantime, there are no doubts that this is the best mountain bike drivetrain that we have ever had the pleasure of using. Now, if you folks have any questions for us about the new SRAM XX transmission, make sure you drop those into the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys next time. Tooroo!